Hello, I'm Emmanuel. Welcome back to MOG Economics. In this video, we'll be continuing our discussion on regression analysis by looking at the properties of ONS estimators. We remember that we said regression analysis is concerned with estimating or predicting the average value of the dependent variable on the basis of known values of your independent variable x. And so you are trying to estimate the relationship, a sort of deterministic relationship. And so, so that you can say that if x is this, we should also get a y. We take, for example, you are looking at the relationship between consumption and income. So if you consider all the um, observations in your population, you'll be able to get something like this. This, this is a representation of the population regression function. We just added the stochastic term, the random error, so that we can get the actual. But this exactly is, is your population regression function. And it's a little different from this, the sample regression function, because we are having estimates. Usually, it's not economically feasible to make use of all the observation in your population to estimate the relationship. You probably will just fix, sorry, you probably just randomly select some households or individuals when you are trying to look at the relationship between consumption and income. So upon specifying the, the relationship um, in, in a sort of linear way, we then went ahead to say how can we generate values for this parameter. This is the parameter, B, beta 1 is the, is the intercept per, um, coefficient and beta 2 is the slope coefficient and beta 1 at is the estimate of that parameter, beta 2 at is the estimate of beta 2, the true parameter for beta 2. So how then do we derive values for these um, parameters? How do we derive values? A technique, a popular technique that is at the most basic level and very appealing is the OLS technique. And we can make use of the OLS estimators to derive these values. The OLS estimator, the formula is, is given as this. We looked at it in previous videos and we recall that the value of x here, the small x, is actually representing the deviation from the mean. And the same, the same thing goes for y. So if we get the values of our x from repeated sampling, from sampling the, the population, we can plug it in and derive this estimate. And we also made mention of the fact that there are certain assumptions under which the ordinary least square technique will yield desirable properties. We talked about linearity in parameters, we talked about the zero conditional mean of the disturbances, and so many more. So now we'll be looking at the, the, what properties are we actually trying to bring out by looking at these assumptions, by considering the, the assumptions guiding this estimator, what are the properties we desire to see? And that's where this topic comes in. We're looking at the properties, the desirable properties that, okay, if you have satisfied all the assumptions we've considered, what do we desire to see in these estimators, in these estimators? And the Gov Markov theorem properly and well, it, it, it really captures it. It says that given the assumptions of the classical linear regression model, that's here, CLRM. The least squares estimators, that's OLS estimators, in the class of unbiased linear estimators have minimum variance. Okay, so from this definition, we can draw out keywords. Here we are seeing that the OLS estimators, first, they belong to a class of unbiased linear estimators. And we also see that OLS estimators have minimum variance. So usually there are three properties that OLS estimators possess that are desirable and that's why we can use them if they satisfy the assumptions or if, if the assumption of the classical linear regression model is satisfied. Okay, and the, uh, the properties that we desire are linearity, unbiasedness and minimum variance. When we talk of linearity, we mean that the estimators Right, the beta 2 at and beta 1 at the estimators are a sort of linear relationship, they represent a linear relationship of a random variable. So it's a linear function 
linear function of a random variable and in this case the random variable is a dependent variable why we'll see that we we'll walk through the proof i'm just trying to introduce what it's all about then we'll look at the mathematical derivation okay the next is that the OLS estimator that they are in a class of unbiased yeah so okay so the next property is the unbiasedness property we've seen that OLS estimators are unbiased and when, when we say unbiased we mean that the expected value of the estimate is equal to the true value remember that this estimators here we are working with samples and for every sample you generate random sample when, when, when you randomly select from the population you will derive different estimates using this formula okay for instance now you are you are still looking at the relationship between consumption and income of of families say in lagos in lagos state and you randomly pick families the next time you randomly pick families you probably not, not pick the same families you picked initially so if you put the value of consumption and income for those respective families you selected before when you select a new family you likely get different values and different estimates so you use your estimators to generate estimates so for different samples you select you roughly get different estimates using the same estimator so now what on is saying is that the expected value the average value of this estimate so if you take the expected value of for instance let's assume we are trying to estimate the slope coefficients the average value of all the the, the slope coefficients you can generate from random sampling it will yield the true value of this population parameter the true slope coefficients that is basically what unbiasedness is is telling us so ols property ols estimate estimators possess unbiasedness if they satisfy remember it's conditional on that if they satisfy the assumptions we've looked at before and now the final property is that they possess minimum variance recall that we said ols for the different samples generated randomly um, selected from the population using this OLS estimators you will get different estimates and now the goal is that we want a sort of estimator that yields okay different estimates but not widely spread away from the true population parameter so if we have a sort of normal distribution okay a normal distribution and we already said that the expected value for beta 2 the estimated beta 2 is equal to the true parameter this for this for the, the estimated beta 2 use, using OLS estimator if we assume another estimator that can generate this that is linear and unbiased I will say something like this. Okay, so, this one. so for this estimator, we see that let's let's call this estimator beta two star. Right. So for this estimator, we see that the mean, the mean of this estimator, sorry, we see that the mean of this estimator is also equal to the true parameter but however this other estimator is widely this is it's it's kind of widely dispersed from the center from the mean and so we desire to use this estimator over this because why would there be variability is less with this estimator and we we'll, we'll get to know shortly that OLS estimators yield us estimates with minimum variance so among among the class of linear unbiased estimators
OLS estimators have the least have the least variance. Okay, so we're proving this mathematically just to show that beta 2 we work with beta 2 and whatever we do to, with beta 2 can be replicated using beta, beta 1 so we'll be showing that beta 2 is linear that is is a linear function of y we'll be showing that the expected value of the estimated beta 2 what we get, um, got using the estimator is equal to the true population parameter for beta 2 and we'll also be showing that the variance of beta 2 is actually minimized using OLS estimators. Okay, so now we'll be walking through the mathematical proof of the three properties we looked at linearity, unbiasedness, and minimum variance. Minimum variance. So we'll be starting with linearity. And we we'll recall that. The formula for a beta 2, a simple beta 2, is summation x i y i over summation x i squared. Remember, say what, what we are doing with this can also be replicated using beta 1. We can work, work that out. So, summation x i y i over this. And recall that I said our uh, y is, the small y is. It represents the deviation from the mean. So if we plug this in here, our relationship becomes something like this. Okay. And expanding this, we have summation x i y i minus. And if we take this further and open it up, we'll be having summation x i y i minus y bar summation x i over this. So y bar is a constant, so it can come out of the summation. And we recall that summation x i is zero, the deviation from your mean is zero. So if summation xi is 0, then the value here is 0. So automatically, our beta 2 is still the same thing as this. Okay. So representing our beta 2 as this, I, I'm trying to bring out the linearity um, property. So let me try to represent this as then I'm trying to bring out this solution on top, bring it up and write something like this. Okay, just some mathematical manipulation, but it's exactly the same thing. So doing it this way, I now try to represent this guy as k. So I represent this guy as k, and I can write this relationship as summation k. So let me just write so with here. A beta 2 is summation k i y i. Right. Where k is, let me define it here. Where k is x i over summation x i squared. Okay. So we see that the value here, summation k i y i is representing our beta 2 and k is can be treated as a sort of constant remember that we in the assumptions we said x is non-stochastic is fixed and k is defined by x and also x squared so it's non-stochastic and is we can be, we can we can treat it as a constant and from this we see that beta 2 is a linear function of y in fact is the arithmetic average of y using k as weights we could write this stuff let's, let's assume there are three three um, 
three periods or three observations, we could say our beta 2 is something as k1 y1 plus k2 y2 plus k3 y3. Just trying to expand that. And we see that beta 2 is a linear, it's just a linear representation, linear function of y. So with this, we've proved the linearity property. Next, we'll be looking at the unbiasedness property. Hope you enjoyed the video you just saw. If you want more of our videos, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell. Now, there is a way to enjoy to make the basis of our YouTube channel, which is to go to the playlist section of every video or of every topic. So, what you have to do is just type emoji economics on YouTube. When the page displays, you know, make sure you subscribe. A bell button appears immediately, so you click on that bell button. Then go to the playlist section. So, you are going to see our videos, playlist, description, and all of that. So, just go to the playlist section and whatever topic you are looking for, click on look for the playlist and click on um, the video. Now, our playlists have their classes, have the classes arranged in a very chronological manner. So, if you want to see a class on ISLM, so it starts from the beginning. The simple ones to the um, difficult to the complex ones. So if you want to see a video on let's say elasticity of demand, so you start from what is price elasticity, so from there then to the basic ones and on and on. So I'm just telling you that in case you really want to make the best of this YouTube channel. And there's also one thing that I want to add, um, which is that our YouTube classes may not be enough for you. you may want um, you may want a regular interaction with uh, with the tutors and all of that. So what you just have to do is to check the description of the video. You are going to find a WhatsApp link. So, but before you do that, I really have to tell you that clicking that link is going to lead you to our one of our schools. So it's going to lead to some of our schools. So we have um, MOG School of Economics on WhatsApp, and we make it of our YouTube channel to run the groups. So the classes are paid for. So you are meant to pay for them. So to join our Econometric School. So that is 2,500 Naira per month. And to join our microeconomics or macroeconomics schools, so that is 2,000 Naira per month. We also have, our math, we don't have classes or we don't have schools of mathematical economics because, you know, uh, microeconomics has its mathematical aspects as well as macroeconomics. So the mathematical aspect of macroeconomics is treated with, is treated in the macroeconomics school and the mathematical aspect of microeconomics is treated with the micro, microeconomics school as well. So I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.